is the co-founder and CTO, Nutrace. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Rochin Sinha. Right, so I'm Rochin, I'm the co-founder and CTO of Nutrace. Uh, Nutrace began in October 2021. Uh, my co-founder Prashant and I started it with the vision to decarbonize the world through innovations and technology. Uh, this sounds like a big vision, but I think every vision ha needs to be ambitious. Both Prashant and I uh, started our journey uh, in India, but then we went on to Europe to pursue our careers, whether it is, uh, whether it is uh, doing a PhD or pursuing uh, a job in Europe. And we used to come back to India once every year maybe, and every year we had a snapshot of the effect of climate change on our hometowns. Whether it's increasing temperatures or whether it is uh, floods or droughts, which happened a lot actually in my state of Bihar. We saw the effect that climate change was happening and we realized that mitigating the effects of climate change is something that we have to do today and not in 2050 or 2070. We just cannot wait that long. It's already pretty late. So our vision became to help to decarbonize the world and the way we wanted to do it is through developing new technologies. And the first mission that we chose was the wide scale adoption of affordable green hydrogen to help fight climate change. So the question is basically the uh, hydrogen is a very key resource in terms of the fight against climate change and green hydrogen plays a huge role there. So why, why is it such an important uh, resource? Hydrogen is an important process and feedstock gas in multiple industries like refineries. Uh, so when you talk about a BS6 engine, uh, the emissions control that you're getting is by removing sulfur from diesel, right? And that is happening through hydrogen. So refineries use around 50% of the hydrogen that is produced today. Secondly, food. The food security that our country wants or the world needs is happening through fertilizers and fertilizers are produced through ammonia. Ammonia is produced through hydrogen. So that is another huge use, use case of hydrogen. But that's not all. Hydrogen is also a very Im important energy carrier and has immense potential there. Uh, recently in Europe, they have started using hydrogen to pr produce steel. So instead of using coke, or coal, we are using hydrogen. And that is again reducing the amount of emissions from uh, steel. We also are using it for cement and of course for mobility. I think in the last panel we discussed about this. But for long haul, uh, long range mobility, uh, hydrogen plays an important role. So whether it's trucks or buses or ships or planes, hydrogen is going to play an important role in mobility as well. So currently, we are producing around 100 million tons of hydrogen every year. And that of that, 95% is being produced from fossil fuels. This is responsible for 1 billion tons of CO2 every year. That's around 3% of the entire global emissions of CO2. That's a huge amount. And so this is not sustainable. We have to have a change there. And the change is by producing something called green hydrogen via electrolysis. So the green hydrogen is basically a means of producing hydrogen without, with zero emissions. And the process and the device through which it is done are called electrolyzers. And I'll discuss about it a little bit more in the future. So before we understand uh, what are electrolyzers, we need to understand what is electrolysis. Electrolysis is the process of producing hydrogen and oxygen from water by applying electricity to it. It's extremely simple. You have done it in school probably. Uh, you, if you just take a bucket of water and you stick two pencils inside and you apply electricity to it, you start producing hydrogen and oxygen. Right? So that's a simple electrolysis process. The device that allows us to do this in an efficient manner and in a safe manner is called an electrolyzer. And the electrolyzer consists of three major components. There are thousands of components in an electrolyzer, but there are three major components that it's its heart. The first is the anode at which the oxygen is evolved. Second is the cathode at which the hydrogen is evolved. And the third 
is the membrane which separates the two gases, basically the hydrogen and oxygen, keeping them separated, both for safety and for efficiency. So then, if this is such a simple process and anybody can do it in a lab, uh, why uh, don't we have the 100 million tons of hydrogen being produced from electrolysis? Why is it all being produced from fossil fuels? And the simple answer is cost. Green hydrogen is four to five times more expensive than fossil fuel-based gray hydrogen. The reason for that is the very expensive nature of the electrolyzers. Electrolyzers have been around for over 100 years, but they have developed as a form of a cottage industry. Basically, companies building one or two units a year for decades on end. Right? And so because of that, they, are very, uh, they have developed in such a way that they are very expensive to manufacture. They have a high cost and supply chain risk of membranes. So basically, membranes, there are two companies in the entire world that dominate the membrane supply chain. They decide the cost, they decide who gets the membrane, and basically it's a supply chain risk on a geopolitical level. Right. And we also, if we want to have better OPEX, so higher efficiency, we need to use rare earth metals like platinum and iridium. Both platinum and iridium are more than $100,000 per kg. Iridium, 90% of it is made in South Africa, mined in South Africa, and all of it is refined in China. So again, rare earth metals are also a supply chain risk. Finally, like I said before, it's a cottage industry. So the manufacturing process of current conventional electrolyzers are all extremely manual, and scaling that up is extremely difficult. So the Economies of scale also don't help the conventional electrolyzers. To give you an idea of the challenge we are facing, to replace 100 million tons of hydrogen with green hydrogen via electrolysis, we need to have an electrolyzer capacity of 600 gigawatts. The current installed capacity is 2.5 gigawatt. And the entire globe has a manufacturing capacity of electrolyzers of around 10 gigawatts. So actually, if we go at the current pace, it will actually be 2050 by the, by the time we can replace 100 million tons, which is used today. But as you can see, by 2050, we actually need much more, 1,300 gigawatts of electrolyzer capacity. Right? So something has to change. And this is where Nutrace comes in. Nutrace has built a membraneless electrolyzer technology, which does not use any rare earth metals. So we started with a simple first principles thinking. What is the problem with electrolyzers today? The problem is that it cannot scale. It uses membranes that are a supply chain risk. It uses rare earth metals that are a supply chain risk. So then the most obvious answer is, okay, remove the membranes and remove the rare earth metals. But it's not as simple as that, obviously, because it still has to produce hydrogen at the same efficiency and at lower cost than conventional electrolyzers. So this is where our IP comes in. So we built something called membraneless electrolyzers, where basically the conversion of hydrogen and oxygen, uh, the separation of hydrogen and oxygen, sorry, is happening through precision fluid engineering. Basically what you see here is that you have the cathode at which the hydrogen is being generated, and you have the anode at which the oxygen is being generated, and you have an electrolyte flow. And this electrolyte flow is of a certain nature. It has to be uniform in nature, and it has to have a uniform speed and it has to basically be equal across the entire dimension of the electrolyzer. And this electrolyte flow actually pushes the bubbles towards the walls and takes it out. So in the end, in the outlet, you have the electrolyte plus the hydrogen gas and the electrolyte plus the oxygen gas. So this is the basic working principle, which, is, which sounds very simple, but the core IP lies in how do we basically, first of all, maintain uniform flow of electrolyte in these reactors, which we call the reactors, and how do we scale it up to a megawatt level? That is where our IP lies. The beauty here is that we are not using any membranes, we are not using rare earth metals, and another added advantage is because of the way we have designed our electrolyzers, we actually, uh, it, 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 it uh, ended in around a 30% drop in capex cost of our electrolyzers. So just to give you a flavor of what we have done in the past two years, uh, we first made a proof of concept back in uh, December of 2021 in around two months in IIT Madras. 
which was basically a watt level electrolyzer reactor. Uh, we then quickly went on to build a kilowatt scale system in another two to three months. And this was the first indigenously designed full scale membraneless electrolyzer system. We didn't stop there. We then went on to build Mark III, which is uh, the first fully automated electrolyzer system, uh, which is capable of running stacks ranging from 10 kilowatt to 100 kilowatt. And it, is, it has built in data collection and analytics platform to basically make sure that your electrolyzer is running at maximum efficiency and complete safety. We then went on to build Mark IV, which, is, which can run up to 500 kilowatts of electrolyzer, which basically it means that we are already at a stage where no other company in India has reached. We are already building multi-100 kilowatt level electrolyzer systems. And we are actually already deploying it to customer sites. Our next goal is obviously to go to a megawatt level system, and this is going to happen in the next couple of years. During this whole journey, we made multiple innovations to make this possible. Uh, we basically made an in-house catalyst, which has the same performance as those of rare earth metals, but without any rare earth metals. We made a full-scale membraneless electrolyzer stack manufacturing unit, uh, which we are now in the process of automating. And we also built an analytics and management software, which basically allows the user to know exactly the health and status of the electrolyzer and to run it at maximum efficiency and with maximum safety. We are the first company to build India's first truly indigenous electrolyzer technology, and we are building it for the world from day one. We have now uh, finished around a 100 kilowatt system, and we are aiming for 2025 for a one megawatt system. And that's when we will hit the golden number of one and a half to two dollars per kg of green hydrogen cost, which will make it basically equivalent to gray hydrogen. And that is the key to start replacing the gray hydrogen production with green hydrogen and start putting a dent in that billion, a billion tons of CO2 emission that is happening today. So as I said in the beginning, our mission is to transition the world towards green hydrogen in a way which is scalable, affordable, and clean. And as I hopefully showed you, that is what we are doing today. Thank you. Thank you.